Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, and it's 9.05, and I'm live. I'm glad you can join me today. I'm going to talk to you about one of those taboo subjects uh, today on Todd, with Todd, excuse me. So yesterday I began a new conversation with you on having a new mind and new thinking and receiving the renewed mind. So I'm glad you can join me today. I'm going to be real quick with this and get straight to it, all right? So I've had people ask me in the past, Todd, have you lost your mind? And my answer is, yes, I have lost my mind. You have to know that in order to get a new mind, you're going to have to remove the old in order to replace it with a new so yesterday I began talking to you from Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to be talking to you from Romans chapter 12 as well today. The Bible says in Romans 12, 1 and verse 2, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Thank you for joining me this morning, everyone. So, have I lost my mind? Yes, I have. And I had to lose it in order to replace it with a new mind. So I'm going to talk to you today about the power of humility and what this has to do with us. So Romans chapter 12, in verse 3, he says, I say to you, uh, through the grace that was given unto me, that every man that is among you, that he should not think of himself, he should not think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think tho soberly, according as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So I want you to uh, be established in this understanding, that true power, listen very closely to me, true power to change is first found in humility. True power to change is first found in humility. So if we're going to receive a new mind, that mind is one of humility. Now I know, I know that this is probably isn't talked about much and you probably haven't uh, heard the latest popular sermon on humility, but humility always precedes obedience. Let me say that again. Humility precedes obedience. How do I know this? Philippians chapter 2 tells us this, verses 5 through 8, that Jesus, Jesus, though he uh, was equal with God, he did not think it robbery. Listen to it very close. Let me flip over here and read this to you. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And what happened then? He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So we hear a lot that we need to have faith, but we know that faith must be followed by obedience. But obedience must be preceded by humility. Jesus humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient. This is completely the opposite of what Lucifer did. What did Lucifer do? He became prideful about who he was, his beauty, his looks, and of, of who he was. And this led to rebellion. Rebellion is equated in the book of 1 Samuel as witchcraft. The, the rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. We also know in Galatians chapter 5 that witchcraft is called a work of the flesh. So I wanted to talk to all of those today who may be seeking occultic power, satanic power, or even Christian people. You know, there are Christian people that are looking for power. They want the power to prophesy. They want the power to walk in miracles. You know, first, you need to seek humility. Because true power, true power is not found in exalting oneself or lifting oneself up. That's what Romans 12 and 3, he says, we read it very clearly right here. Romans 12 and verse 3, he said, not to, for a man not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. So I call humility the forgotten message. 
I dare say that there's a few places that you may hear of, of humility. I believe that humility is the keyhole to grace. It is the keyhole to grace. What is grace? Grace is not God's oversight or God overlooking sin. Grace is the power to go beyond your own ability. Grace is the power to go beyond your own ability. The occultic, I understand the occultic, I understand the satanic. I used to be involved in those things many, many years ago, and they're always seeking after power. The occultic are always seeking power. The satanic are always seeking power. Power that they can harness, power that they can control. It's a self-seeking power. The power of Christianity, listen very closely to me, the power of Christianity is is found through humility. The power of Christianity is found through humility. What is humility? Let me give you a couple of things. Humility is this, having opinions of oneself that is modest. In other words, you don't overestimate yourself and you don't underestimate others. You don't overestimate yourself and you don't underestimate others. You have to have a modest estimation of yourself. Humility is curbing personal passions. Humility is lowering self. You have to or assigning a lower rank to self or to behave yourself uh, in an unassuming manner. Lord have mercy, do people ever assume things? You know, we've got assumptions going flying everywhere in every direction. But humility is to behave or to uh, behave in an unassuming manner. So what does the kingdom tell us to do? We know that the Bible tells us this. If we will humble ourselves as children, he says, then you will be great in the kingdom. That's Matthew 18 and verse 4. This has to become your way of thinking if you're going to receive a new mind, if you're going to receive a new way of thinking, if you're, you know, he said, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed through the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be renewed to and through and in humility. How can I begin to show humility? Well, humility will do these things. It will rejoice when another is honored and it will rejoice when another is rewarded. Now, we have to find humility. I'm going to make a challenge to you for the rest of this week because this is going to be the course of my conversation. Get into Romans chapter 12 and begin to read Romans chapter 12 this week. We're going to find the course of humility in order to find the renewed mind. We're going to remove the old and replace it with the new. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I've been talking to you about receiving a, a renewed mind and renewed thinking. I'll be back on tomorrow, 9.05. I'm live. This is Today with Todd. If you'd like to know more, you can visit my website. It's wisdomforbeyond.com. I'll see you back tomorrow at 9.05. I'll be live. Bye-bye.